Today, I just want to talk to you about the recent issue that's been highlighted in ExpressLRS with regards to the crystal oscillator frequency in some transmitters and receivers that is causing problems with binding or loss of connection in flight. In this video, I'm going to give you an overview of what the issue actually is. We'll take a look at it on a spectrum analyzer. And then at the end, I'm going to explain why I think you should not worry about this, why you don't need to look at your existing gear or worry about it while purchasing new gear in the future. Now, just before I do this, if you found this video useful, please do consider checking out the links to my Patreon as well as buy me a coffee in the description. It is only by you guys using them am I able to keep making content like this, hopefully providing you interesting information that you may not see elsewhere. Also, if you're new here, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. And if you find this video helpful, please do give it a like. Anyway, let's get on with it and let's take a look at what this issue is all about. Okay, so to try and explain this in the simple terms. Every Express LRS receiver and transmitter uses a 52 megahertz crystal oscillator. This oscillator generates a 52 megahertz signal, which is used by the RF chipset to generate your 2.4 gigahertz wireless transmission, which you get from your system. Now, this oscillator is designed to be a reference signal and all the frequencies in the system are based off this. As a result, if your crystal oscillator isn't quite running on the right frequency, your system won't run on the right frequency as well. The issue that's been found is that some crystal oscillators are drifting or are not set up correctly and are actually outside of the tolerance, which means when the Express LRS system tries to communicate between the transmitter and receiver, they're not quite within the same frequency they need to be. And then the link breaks down. Just to show you this chart that's on the Express LRS website, you can see the ideal system will have its reference frequency, your transmitter and receiver, then all in a line on the same frequency. A working pair here might be a system that has up to a hundred kilohertz of deviation between the two. So one part of the system may be out up to a hundred kilohertz compared to another, but that is fine. The system will still work. You've got another here with a 50 kilohertz deviation, which again, you can see that the receiver is ahead of the transmitter. But again, it would work fine because it's within the tolerance allowed. Over here, we can see that there's actually a malfunction in pair that is showing a difference of up to 250 kilohertz between the transmitter and receiver, which would mean the system wouldn't actually communicate properly. Now, the actual tolerance of how much the two can be out is dependent on the mode set. However, Express LRS say at 500 hertz, the threshold is about 190 kilohertz. Now, this issue manifests itself as either a refusal of your transmitter and receiver to bind or your link drops unexpectedly in flight. It can be caused by the crystal oscillator drifting as it gets hot. And this is a situation where at a cold situation, the oscillator is actually within the tolerance. But as the transmitter or receiver warms up, the tolerance increases and then it falls outside the range and causes the link to drop. Now, as part of their diagnostics for this, the Express LRS team started looking at the tolerance on many of the receivers and transmitters they had available to them. If we look down this list, you can see whilst many of these receivers are in tolerance, it is clear some from Maytech as well as some from JHEMCU are not in tolerance, and these are the ones causing issues. You can see there are variances between some of them. And what we have is an area of safe tolerance, an area of warning, which will still work, but could cause problems in the future. And you've got an area of completely out of tolerance. Whilst there are only a very limited few in the completely out of tolerance area, there are a few on the intolerance area. And it is worth taking that into account when looking at the measurements. But for the most part, most of the gear is fine. Now, as for what causes some of these to be in and out of tolerance, that really does depend on a number of factors. Some of it is down to the fact that they're using a cheap crystal oscillator, which isn't as good as it should be. Others are due to the fact that the circuitry is loaded incorrectly and they've added too many capacitors onto the oscillator, causing it to be lower in frequency than it should be. If you look at the chart again, you will see predominantly the issue is on the negative side with the system running under frequency than over frequency. And this is where on these units, the overloading of the oscillator has caused it to be outside the tolerance range. 
Now, Express LRS is a frequency hopping system. It is not sitting there on one frequency. When the radio and the receiver communicate, they agree a hopping pattern and both systems hop together. What's important though, is they both hop together onto the same frequency and that they are not hopping slightly off. And this is where the tolerance issue comes into play because you can have a receiver which is expected to receive the signal exactly in the correct area, but the transmitter is hopping to the correct frequency, but because it's outside of the tolerance area, it isn't actually being picked up by the receiver. Now, there are several ways you can test for this issue within Express LRS, and they explain that on the page. There is also a new testing firmware that allows us to actually force our Express LRS transmitter or receiver to transmit on a specific frequency, and we can then measure that frequency with a spectrum analyzer and see if it is actually on it or if it is slightly off and how much by. And that's what we're going to do next. So what I'm going to do is get a receiver set up, we'll hop onto the spectrum analyzer, and I'm going to demonstrate one that is actually off. Now here is one of the RadioMaster RP receivers and I've already installed this testing firmware onto it. This will tell the receiver to transmit a single frequency of 2440 megahertz. What we will then do is look on the spectrum analyzer at what it is actually transmitting on compared to what we've actually told it to transmit on. So let's hop over to the analyzer. Now, as you can see, I've got my spectrum analyzer up in the background. As a result of this, you might find this video gets a bit jittery or jerky. Unfortunately, it's simply as a result of the overhead I'm putting on the computer. I'm gonna to try to avoid moving too much. I've currently got the analyzer set to 2.440 gigahertz or 2,440 megahertz. That is what frequency the carrier from the receiver is going to transmit on. I've got the custom firmware installed, so I'm just gonna hop over to that screen. And what I'm going to do now is hit this button here, which will tell the receiver to transmit a continuous carrier on that frequency. So I've clicked on that. If we hop back, you can now see that a carrier has appeared here in the center. And this is the carrier from the receiver that we're going to use to measure what the offset for the crystal oscillator actually is. So we've told the receiver to transmit on 2440 megahertz. And what we're going to do is have a look at what actual frequency it's transmitting on. And whatever the deviation is on that will be the deviation on our oscillator. So if we zoom in and actually release that marker there and I'm just going to place my marker here right in the center and if I zoom in we can see that that is a frequency of 2440.021.9 kilohertz so that receiver is a total of 21 kilohertz off the center frequency. Now if you remember what I said earlier about what the tolerance was basically about 190 kilohertz up 500 hertz mode on Express LRS. So we are well within tolerance on this receiver. It is worth noting though, that it is not good enough to just test it here. We need to allow this receiver to actually warm up and test it again and see if there's any deviation later down the line as the crystal oscillator drifts as the temperature changes on the receiver. So if you were doing these tests, what you would need to do is do it cold, let the receiver get hot and see what it's like then under warm temperatures and see what the deviation is between the two. Now, as this is so close, I would not expect to see any great deviation on this more than maybe five or 10 kilohertz. We are well within tolerance on this one here. Now, the next thing I'll quickly test is this Beta FPV transmitter. This is the one watt variant. So this is the full power one. And we'll have a look at what the tolerance is on this compared to the receiver we've just looked at. So we've got the transmitter now on the screen and I've adjusted the font on the analyzer a little bit, hopefully to show it a bit easier for you because it is very, very small. Now you can see that the carrier has appeared here. And if I go up here and if we put our marker right in the center of it, you can see there we're getting a frequency of 2439.98. 4.3 kilohertz. So there we are roughly 16 kilohertz below the center frequency we were expecting. Again, still well within the tolerance, but actually it's interesting to note that it is a little down compared to the receiver that was showing a little bit up. 
Just to show you a module with a bit of error compared to the others, this one here is the White Beta FPV 500 milliwatt one. I have had no problems with this one, but let's have a look at how it looks on the analyzer. So what we'll do is pop it there. You can now see that the carrier has appeared up there nice and strong in the middle. What we'll do is zoom in. We'll place our marker in the center. And what you can see there is that we've got a frequency of 2439871. So that is a deviation or a tolerance error of about 130 kilohertz. That is much bigger than we have seen on the receivers as well as that other transmitter module we looked at earlier. So what this does show is that you can have a module that isn't giving you any problems, but it can have quite a large error. This one is below that tolerance of about 190 kilohertz, but it is in that 130 area. I wouldn't expect it to drift too much beyond this, but it is worth noting that it is there. Now, when we looked at that chart earlier, you'd have noted that most of the modules with error were in the negative, and this one is in the negative as well. It isn't often the case that they're in the positive. It's more often that they're dragging down, and it seems to be the earlier Express LRS modules that do have this larger drag down in tolerance compared to the newer ones. If you don't have access to a spectrum analyzer or a device such as a Hack RF, you can still do some tests with your existing system to see what the oscillator error is. To do this, you will need to reflash both your transmitter and your receiver with a version of Express LRS which is later than 3.0. At the time of me making this video, that is in beta or release candidate. However, if you're watching this later in the future, 3.0 onwards may actually be public release, and you will need to put in some specific programming options via the user defined section. This is all listed here on the page for this error on the Express LRS website, and I will link to this in the description. This top section here is what you would paste into the user defines for the transmitter, and this bottom section here is what you would paste into the user defines for the receiver, noting the binding phrase being set to whatever you want it to be, or you could leave it as what is set there, as long as it is the same on both devices. To do this, you would need to open your Express LRS configurator, then choose your version of firmware that needs to be version 3.0 onwards. If you're doing it now, you will need to show pre-releases to be able to see the release candidates. Go down and select your hardware, and rather than select the standard mode here, you need to change this to manual mode and then paste in the user defines from that page I have just showed you into this area here, and then flash that onto both your transmitter and receiver. Once the flash is complete, power it all up and allow them to connect. Then go into your model settings, go onto your telemetry screen, and what you're looking for is an option called RSNR. If that isn't actually showing, what you will need to do is go down to the bottom and click on the Discover New Sensors and allow it to pick it up. And then, as long as your connection is correct and the flash has been successful, you should see this number here showing as it is. Now, as you can see, this number at the moment is showing 80 to 82. The Express LRS team say a good offset or a good error rate for your radio to receiver should be less plus or minus 20. So either less than plus 20 or less than minus 20. The closer to zero that is, the better. Anything plus or minus 60 should be okay and it shouldn't give you any problems, but anything plus minus 70 or more is going to give you potential issues in the future. As you can see here, we have a reading of 80. Now this is the white Express LRS module that I showed you earlier on the analyzer that had the error rate of around 130 kilohertz. You can now see that it is showing above 70 and a reading of 80, which is putting us in the danger zone. The problem is this way measuring it is that you're not seeing the full actual reading as we saw on the analyzer, it was about 130 kilohertz, still below that 190 that they say you're going to start getting problems in, whereas on here, it's above that 70 area where they say you're going to walk into potential issues, yet I haven't actually had any with this module myself.
It is also worth mentioning at this point that this error rate is a combination of the two. So it's not the specific error rate of the module or the receiver, it is the error rate between those two devices. So it could be a little more or less than you've seen on the analyzer as a result of that. What I'll do next is hop over to the black module that had very low error rate and we'll take a look at how that shows on here as well. Okay, so I've swapped over to that black module, which was giving us an error rate of less than 20 kilohertz. I think it was around 16 kilohertz off the top of my head. And you can see now it's showing an RSNR rate of five or six dB. So again, that is reflecting what we were seeing on the spectrum analyzer. As I said just now, anything plus or minus 20 up to that point is absolutely fine. Below 60, above minus 60 is fine, but anything above that in the 70s and 80s, you're going to potentially have issues. What I would say is this should not be a strict indicator that you do have a problem, but if you are getting problems with your link dropping randomly or you're having problems connecting, then this is possibly a nice way to rule out any potential issues you're having with the oscillator error. Just to quickly show you some data that I've taken from some of my receivers and transmitters, I've put it here into some charts. We have some RadioMaster RP1s and RP2s, which is their new receivers, a Flyru EL24P, as well as an EP2 from Happy Model. Now, the RadioMaster receivers are in general very, very good. We have two kilohertz positive and 22 kilohertz positive on the new RP series, absolutely fine, well within tolerance and nothing to worry about at all. We have a 35 kilohertz and a 21 kilohertz on the Flywoo and EP2. Again, very, very good. None of these are likely to give us any problems. If we then hop over to the transmitters, here you can see we're into the negative rather than the positive with that white TX Micro 500 showing minus 28. And on my test just now, we were roughly minus 30. And then on the black one, we're seeing minus 22. Again, not major, but it does show that there is a difference between them. Now, I haven't tested all of my other radios. I haven't done the radios with Express LRS built in. This was just a short test to see how some of the gear held up compared to what I was expecting. So, as you've seen, pretty much all the hardware does have some error with regards to the tolerance. However, most of the receivers of mine are well within that. Certainly nothing there I'm particularly concerned about with the Radio Masters being some of the best. However, if we talk about the TX modules, you can see one of the beta FPVs is fine, but the other one is into that minus 130 area. Whilst that is still nowhere near that minus 190 where we could start to get problems, it is interesting to see it is a little higher than the others. But as I have said already, I have had no issues with that module at all and I'm pretty much going to continue to use it and not really worry about it. Now as for what should you do with your current system, should you test it and what should you be looking for whilst buying new receivers and transmitters in the future? My advice to you is to pretty much ignore this issue. In my opinion, it is not something you as a user should need to worry about. There is no need to start asking questions when you buy a new receiver. What is the tolerance like on the crystal oscillator? There is no need on reviews to question the reviewer on if he has tested this or not, because this is a Q a issue. It is an issue with the product has been made out of tolerance. I would expect manufacturers to get on top of this as time goes on, and this issue pretty much fade away. It is a problem that the user should not need to worry about, and we certainly don't need to be thinking about this every time we're looking at our hardware or every time we're looking to buy new receivers. Yes, there are some on that list that are particularly bad. However, that isn't the case for the majority, and most people will not have any problems at all. The only time I would really think about this issue is if you are either having problems binding or you're having link issues that you can't diagnose through the normal means such as antenna problems or anything else. It would be very easy for this to be whipped up into something that was constantly being talked about when talking about new products. However, I personally do not feel it is necessary. When reviewing receivers in the future, I probably won't delve too deeply into checking the tolerance. I may do it if I feel that it's warranted, but I may not. It is not something I think we need to worry about on a daily basis, and I'm not going to be pushing to put that content into my future videos unless I feel there's a specific reason to do so. 
Hello there, this is Ian from the future. Further to what I've just said, I've actually had an update from the Express LRS team on how they're going to be handling this moving forward. The Express LRS dev team have an internal process now with any manufacturer that needs a new target added. They will be required to send them samples and they will then check those samples via HackRF for frequency drift, as well as a ton of other type approval checks. If anything is well out of spec, it won't be added to the official target list. Users should look out for official target support when buying hardware. Now, what this basically means is manufacturers are not going to get in the configurator or have an official target unless they've sent hardware to the dev team and it's been tested. This should pretty much end this problem moving forward. However, what it won't stop is manufacturers forking their own version and putting their own targets on their website. The basics is if you want to 100% avoid any problems, make sure you are only buying hardware that has support in the official Express LRS configurator and support via official targets. Now, whilst I've been saying this, on screen is showing you the Open Collective page where you can support the Express LRS project. If you are a user of Express LRS and like what they've done, please do consider supporting them via their Open Collective page. You can do this on a single donation or a recurring payment basis. We would not have this amazing FPV remote control system without the amazing work that the Express LRS dev team has done. In my experience, they are some of the most friendly, active and dedicated developers in the FPV community. They are pushing the boundaries and please do support them to continue to do the amazing work that they have done already. Now, if you want to find out more about this issue, I will put the link to the Express LRS page in the description of this video where you can click on it and it's got some info as well on how you can do some of the testing that I've done, as well as that test that I showed you with the radio. Also, if you found this video interesting, please do make sure you are a subscriber to the channel. And if you have found it interesting, please do give it a like. If you'd like to support us to keep making content like this in the future, please do check out the links to my Patreon. It is only through the support of my patrons am I able to keep making content on this channel. I want to say a massive thank you to all of the patrons who've helped support us in the last 12 months and continue to support us moving forward. And if you feel you'd like to support us as well, please do check that link out. Anyway, that's it from me. Stay safe. Please let me know what you think in the comments and I will speak to you soon.